Somalian and parrots are the best ones in the world. Pirates are doing great job fighting big boats who are robbing and poisoning us. When someone has no protection and no government, no peace and no one to turn to, they are ready to die. They wield AK-47 machine guns, grenade launchers, and fly across the sea in small open skiffs keeping the world's most powerful navies at bay. An armada of advanced military ships from the U.S., Russia, NATO, and India locked in a stalemate against a small band of pirates. So who are these outlaws and why do they do it? Well, practically nothing is known about Somalia's pirates because their homeland is a lawless state ravaged by civil war and famine. Any Westerner entering Somalia is risking his life. A cameraman from Finland, Kakas Arimaki, took that dangerous journey deep into the heart of the pirate's stronghold. How dangerous is it for a journalist in Somalia? I would say very dangerous. I would say you have to have proper security or otherwise you will be in the back of a truck quite fast. Random gunshots echo nearby. Checkpoints are a gamble. No one can be trusted. The guards could easily sell them to bandits or let them pass. Behind me, you see our military men. There are five guys packed with AK-47s and so on. And in front of us, there's another five guys. Gallery of guards with AK-47s. You see what happens, there's always action going on. Always you have to be dodging bullets. After a two-day journey to a lawless pirate village, Caucus meets veteran hijacker Ali Isna. His face hidden because he's wanted for piracy on the high seas. The first ship we hijacked was Iranian. That was my first night at sea as a pirate. It was like going into the unknown, and it was one of the most dangerous nights. But after that, it seemed normal. I feel like a trained soldier. And all Somali pirates follow a strict code of conduct. When we started, we had three major rules. First, we hijacked boats without harming anybody. Second, don't go into situations where you can harm yourself. Third, a hijacked boat can't be hijacked again. There are no reported cases of a Somali pirate killing a hostage. Reporter Dan Sekulic spent three years in Africa researching piracy. They have morphed from small entities which were opportunistic. They grew in size and they grew in capabilities so that you have a command and control structure, you have logistics people, you have intelligence operatives, you have financiers, and then of course you've got the, the soldiers or the pirates at the bottom who carry out the attacks. And each pirate's share of the ransom depends on his willingness to risk his life. The more he risks, the more he gets paid. The man who jumps into the boat first gets paid double. The first one is usually the one who gets killed or shot at. 40-year-old Hassan Ali Mohammed decided that hijacking was the way to survive in a land with few jobs and crushing poverty. We could not find a way to provide for our families. That's why we chose this one. A former fisherman, Hassan says he lost his job when the Somali government collapsed decades ago. Foreign ships moved in, shutting down the Somali fishing trade. I felt like the whole world was attacking us by sending boats to rob our fish and make our sea a dumping ground. What about the argument that they make that uh, tries to justify their existence, that they have no other alternative but to make money this way? It doesn't justify the actions that are being taken today. If there's overfishing going on in the waters off of Somalia, why does that uh, give you the permission to go and attack a super tanker or an aid ship carrying food aid for your own people? One wrong does not make a right. But the lure of easy, big money increasingly draws young men from around the country into the ranks of Somali pirates. Kids often high on cot, a cocaine-like stimulant. 
All of the hijackers involved in last week's attack on the Maersk, Alabama, were teenagers. This young pirate was the only survivor. I think we maybe know that teenagers always don't think through everything that they're doing. Young or old, these Somali pirates are now raking in up to $150 million a year in ransom money. They claim their work is helping improve life in Somalia. There are lots of new houses being built all the time, and even some hotels that we were living in was definitely built by piracy money. Sure, there are some rich pirates. Some have even bought a lot of cars and trucks to do business. But others say the pirates are only lining their own pockets. In the last decade and a half, uh, there's been no rebuilding going on in Somalia. In fact, the opposite has happened. I mean, it's disintegrated. These guys are not Robin Hoods. No. But the Pirates Caucus interviewed say that while they may be rich, they're also victims of their own wealth. The money I have made gives me the creeps. I'm always afraid, even now. The job of a pirate is not a respected profession, even in this town. To be honest, when I look back, I think we got more problems than money. I have to fear everybody who has a gun, because there's always someone hunting you. The hunters on the sea have become the hunted in their own homeland. Everybody gets greedy. It leads to a situation where you lose your life.